Recap in minutes. In today's video, we will be going to enjoy an action and thriller movie named, Without Remorse. There will be spoilers ahead, so chill out and enjoy. The movie begins when some of the US Navy SEALs appear from a pound, and kill some militants. They walk through the ruins of that building and the streets of Aleppo in Syria, they search for someone. When they clear the building, Agent Ritter meets the team and tells them to free a CIA hostage from the Syrian government troops. After getting brief information from that agent, team leader John Kelly moves with his team to another part of the city. They attack a suspected building and free the hostage. When they complete the operation, John Kelly searches the pockets of a killed Syrian troop and finds out from his phone data that, he was an ex-Russian army man. Agent Ritter asks him to leave this matter and move immediately. When they were leaving, a Russian troop fired an RPG at them. Kelly and his team start counterattack on them. Soon they realize that it was not the safe house of the Syrian troops, but a Russian arms depot. After the intense fight there, Kelly along with his surviving troops, Agent Ritter, and the freed hostage ran to the roof of the building, where a chopper was waiting for them. In the chopper Kelly blames Ritter for the killing of his men at the hands of the Russians. Soon they bomb the building and move away. In the next scene, one of Kelly's team members, who was retired from the military and having a good time with his family at home, got hit by a van outside of his home. After some time, another retired team member also gets killed by some unknown gunman on the road. Both of them were the troops who took part in freeing the CIA hostage in Aleppo three years back. At night, Kelly and his wife were getting ready to sleep in his bedroom, he leaves her in the bedroom to sleep while he came to the sofa to eat snacks, and listen to music. After a while, his laptop turns off. He notices that the electricity in his house goes out. Suddenly, he hears some footsteps approaching and opening a door, he takes his gun out from the drawer and follows the footsteps in his house. He finds out that several people have sneaked into his house. They kill his pregnant wife while Kelly starts to kill them one by one. When he was about to kill the last one, he shots fires at him and got wounded. When that intruder ran out of bullets, he left his house immediately. Kelly crawls to reach his bedroom to see his wife, but unfortunately, she was dead. In the next scene, Kelly was being taken to the hospital. He gets conscious after some time. His Navy SEAL boss Karen Greer visits him and informs him of the death of his wife and two former SEAL members. He also tells him the security measures being taken for the remaining group members of the SEAL team. He tells her that the attackers at his home were not ordinary people or thieves, they were professionals. They come there to his house on purpose because one of them was killed by them in the bedroom. Kelly asks her to give him a favor by giving him the names of the attackers. She says that she does not know anything. She tells him to rest because the case is under investigation. After some time, Kelly recovers and starts training in the special unit of the US Army. In the meantime, the Secretary of Defense arranges the meeting with Agent Ritter and Karen Greer. In the meeting, Agent Ritter tells them that the attackers were the Russians. He said they were the Russian soldiers and members of the FSB, or Federal Security Service of the Russian Federation. He informed the secretary that Kelly, and his team attacked the FSB in Aleppo a few years back to free the CIA hostage. And Russians are doing this to avenge that attack. He further briefed them that the CIA has decided to not move deep to retaliate against these incidents. He concluded that they will not cause any trouble with these attackers in Russia, so, they are going to close the investigations. After some time, Karen goes to see Kelly and tells him that they are the Russians who killed his wife and friends. She also tells him that the CIA is going to stop the investigation. She gives him the favor of giving the files of their passport facilitators in the USA. It was Andre, who helped them enter the USA. In the next scene, Kelly goes to Andre's office while pretending to be drunk. He was stopped by Andre's bodyguards and sent back. He comes back to his truck. He follows Andre's car on the highway and crashes him at the turn. He blocks his car in such a way making it difficult for him to get out of his car. After that, he set his car on fire and got into it. He threatens Andre while shooting him in the leg to tell him the name of the fourth Russian. He tells him the name of Viktor Rikov after some struggle. After this, he comes out of his car and gets arrested by the police. In the next scene, Karen visits Kelly in the prison. She tells him that he is in big trouble after killing Andre. Everyone at the office is angry at your behavior. He tells her that he will kill everyone who was involved in murdering his wife. He also tells her that he knows something which they do not know and if they want to know that, get him bailed from jail. When Kelly returns to his cell, he suspects some movements outside of his cell. An officer asks him to stand up and face the wall, so that they can take him out of the prison for some investigation, but he refuses. Then several officers took him by force. He fights them back and takes one prison officer hostage. He asks them to leave. Shortly after, a U.S. Marshal comes to the cell and asks Kelly to come with them. 
He then hands over a phone to Kelly to talk on. He takes the phone and starts talking. Karen talks to him and asks him to go with the marshal. He goes with them to a closed meeting in a military installation at some unknown place. They asked him to tell them what he knows. He tells them the name of Victor Rikov. He was then asked to identify the photos if there is Victor. Agent Ritter tells them that he is dead. But Kelly identifies him in the photos. Then Ritter again tells them that Victor is a Russian spy and is involved in many activities in the USA. He also tells them that he was a long-time target of the CIA but could not capture him. The secretary tells them that Victor is hiding in Russia. Kelly requests them to allow him to go with the team to catch him, and the secretary grants the permission. After that, Lieutenant Commander Karen, Kelly, and his team get ready to go to Russia on a passenger plane. Agent Ritter comes there and tells them that he will meet them in Russia. Kelly suspects him, and somehow, they set off on a plane to Russia. When they enter the territory of the Russian Federation, their plane was suddenly intercepted by the Russian Air Force. The pilot asks them to land at the Murmansk airport immediately, when they refuse, he attacks the wing of their plane. The plane went down and fell into the Barents Sea into the territory of Russia. Kelly and the rest of the squad try to get out of the water. After surviving in a boat, they hid in a safe house in Russia. After some time, they go to another safe house in Murmansk, where Ritter was planning something with two Russians and money on the table. Kelly accuses Ritter of treason and asks him about his real intentions forcibly. He tells them that he came there after the attack on the plane, they thought they had died. He tells him that they came here to complete the mission of capturing Victor. He further tells him that he hired those two Russians to lead us to Victor. Kelly opens the fire on him while choking him. Karen comes and asks him not to lose his temper. When Agent Ritter's condition got worse and did not change his words of faithfulness, he released him. After some time, Agent Ritter guides them to their flat of Victor. When Kelly gets there he sees Victor's bodyguards already dead. He saw Victor waiting for them and wearing a suicide jacket. He welcomes Kelly and says that he already knows that he and his team are arriving in Russia to kill him. He asks Kelly why he would kill his pregnant wife, Kelly just kept listening to him. Victor says that he and Kelly are the pawns of the same king, and he sent us here on a special mission to kill ourselves. After that Kelly asks him to listen to him but he triggers the button and blows himself up. After the explosion, a sniper shoots Dallas, one of Kelly's team members. They struggle to find out the location of the hidden sniper. Somehow they found him out. Meanwhile, another sniper opens shots at them. Karen and Kelly find the snipers after some time and kill them in action. In the meantime, Russian police and forces surround the apartment building. Kelly asks his troops to flee through the back of the building, while he turns to face the police force on the rooftop. He throws a bomb that kills many policemen, while his men succeed in escaping the apartment building in a van. He keeps them busy with him. He fights with the military men on the apartment stairs, coming to get him. After some time, he also escapes disguising himself as a Russian army troop with a tear gas mask on his face. In the next scene, he arrives at the coordinates in a Russian van. Karen receives him and takes him to a boat. He then leaves Russia immediately with his surviving team members, Karen and Ritter. At the boat, Kelly asks Agent Ritter about Victor and about his job in the CIA. He tells him about his little career. He also tells him to take a bag full of money on the boat, and vanish somewhere in the world. He says that he will report him dead in the operation at the CIA office. Kelly thanked him and said he is sorry for taking him wrong before. After some time, when Secretary Clay was in the bathroom of a restaurant, Kelly shows up. He asks him about his true intentions of sending him to Russia linking the pawn talks of Victor. When he could not answer, he kidnaps him in his car. Kelly threatens to kill his family if he does not answer. Secretary Clay finally tells him why he sent him on this mission. He then starts saying that the US and Russian relations should be constrained, to boost the economy. After these incidents, they have good reason to threaten the people of both nations of war. He also argued that this also unites the American people against their common enemy Russia. He tells him that he and his team were nothing more than bait. In the middle of his talks, he drops the car into the river which drowned him and Secretary Clay. Karen saves Kelly from the river. Kelly gives a voice recorder device, which has the confessional statements of Clay to Karen to give to the CIA. At the end of the movie, Karen drops him at an airport giving him a new passport. She asks him to live a new life under the new name, and not forget her. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this, and to help the channel grow.